now it's straight facts I don't lie in my raps Hunter Biden smoke The Democrats know that Biden ain't win jack The name is Barack He a little B like the pack The earth might be flat Another world famous episode of Andrew Says We're calling it something now John Doyle, Vince Dow Missing Red Eagle politics guys what are we calling this, John? You want to call it Maryland oh. Reunion? I've well, it, yeah, it was supposed to be the Maryland Reunion, but then Rep bailed, uh, which actually, in a way, does recall the Maryland trips because Vince and I would be trying to watch cool content on YouTube as we awaited our speeches the following morning. And there would be like circumstances where Rep would disappear for anywhere between like one to three hours which normally wouldn't be weird because it's like, okay, maybe you want to go for a walk. But we're talking about like midnight, one in the morning and also rural <laughs> Maryland. Like he's disappearing into the woods. He would come back with like dirt and weird scratches on his body. I, I never really wanted to ask too many questions. So this uh, actually this can't does. be real. No, this is completely real. Like Vince can even vouch for this and perhaps even expand. Like this is like completely real. Um, yeah, it even got to the point where some of the organizers were upset because he would. we gave our speeches like 7.30 in the morning and Vince and I were well rested and rep would just be really tired. And he started like speaking in tongues at one point. Um, <laughs> it was all just like a very weird situation. So yeah, this uh, actually is like in a way, a perfect sort of recalling of that whole event. Yeah, no, this is true. And I think partially also he missed out on the great content that was tough love dating. And uh, you know, <laughs> may maybe this, maybe this explains, uh, you know, certain things is what I'll say, but yeah. Yeah, he was like, I don't need to watch Tough Love Dating. I've got it under <laughs> control. Okay, look, I get what you're trying to do. You're a nice enough guy. And they're like, okay, rep, whatever you say. And then you follow up with him like, you know, three months later, and he's got the strategies down, but the execution is with men. And we're like, no, 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 rep, you got this completely backwards. <laughs> you're supposed to apply it to women. And he's like, oh, no, okay, okay. Well, maybe I'll try next time, okay? You guys are A-logging me, all right? It's a witch hunt. <laughs> and so... Uh, I would have loved to have gotten into that with him, but yeah, he's probably on a date with a man or something running like Epic Game and PUA Tactics instead of being on a cool hangout stream with his buddies. Should I know what should I know what this tough love dating thing is? Is this a video? Is this uh, akin to the book of the game or something? No, like if that? you weren't if you weren't there, you don't know, bro. You don't know, bro. Okay. Yeah, normally you I would to be say... there, bro. As a general rule, if you don't have a harem of at least half a dozen Victoria's Secret Angel like caliber mm. women, you probably should be watching Tough Love Dating. Probably should have some sort of like a subscription to that that uh, creator. Um, but I, I'm okay, sure you're covered on that front, so you're probably you're probably okay. Thank you, thanks for you for the vote of confidence. Uh, last time we spoke with. Uh... With him and you, John, we were in the midst of the beginning of the DeSantimonious and Orange Man campaign. Things haven't gone that well for DeSantis, I would say. I saw poll numbers yesterday that were, I think he's still around 14% to Trump's 40-something with all the other candidates. Vince, you're in Florida, right? Are you barred? For, are you? Yeah, I'm Florida. Yeah. yeah, okay. Well, I understand if you don't want to harp on your governor. But um, I don't know. I have seen it less as DeSantis's problem as more of his people's problem, like the stuff that they keep putting out. And I and I think they've dialed back before. But didn't they go to a Dairy Queen like two days after Trump went to a Dairy Queen? What's a blizz? I, 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 don't, I don't I don't know what a blizzard is. I don't know which impression to do the yelling yeah. or the, the blizzard, something like that. Well, I, I think, yeah, they always say his people versus him, but in, in some ways they're one and the same. I'm not talking about necessarily the dirty tactics or whatever, but just really the fact that the DeSantis campaign, let's just put it this way, is the nerd campaign. He himself <laughs> is a nerd, but also the people around him, right? Because where is his primary base of support is Twitter. Who's on Twitter? It's a lot of these DC interns, policy wonks, you know, terminally online people. And so that's kind of who's backing his campaign. And obviously, but also when you listen to him, speak you can tell everything he says is very filtered through think tanks uh we were reacting to on my show a few weeks ago to his cnn interview and they asked him what is going to be your strategy for russia ukraine and i think he gave the answer i'm paraphrasing slightly but it's basically a sustained peace that de-incentivizes prolonged aggression 
And it's mm-hmm. like, I understand what that means, but what actually, that, that sounds like something that's totally filtered through a think tank, right? Uh, whereas, you know, when you ask Trump, Pete, we're going to get it done in 24 hours. And yeah, I think he's having that problem, which is he can't relate to normal people. He is a nerd. He is like a robot from the think tank, terminally online DC world. He himself is a nerd, hence why his supporters are nerds. And that's why he can't get past 14%. Because when you go to the average actual Republican electorate, everyone is like, who the heck is this guy? And what is he talking about? I think that's what's going on. John, is this the nerds campaign? Is this the nerds uprising? The 80s movie attack or revenge of the nerds? Attack of the nerds? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, Vince is completely right there. I mean, the campaign is like just run by dorks. And look, politics in itself is not exactly cool. You know, you're going to have a lot Mm -hmm. of people involved in it who are like pretty nerdy, pretty weird. But the thing is, though, you've got like politicians like, you know, say Jeb Bush, for example, who can still run like a halfway decent campaign. Maybe he'll try to appeal to normal people and he'll have some cringe moments here and there. But Trump, like in himself, is like a fundamentally cool guy. I mean, everybody loves Trump. He's a household name, cultural icon, and he can try to like, you know, wedge his way into a more like political appearance and it works out for him. But somebody like DeSantis, who is a dork, cannot become like cool and macho. And so this is the problem. Like so much of politics is just public masturbation where you've got people who just want to be like really smart and taken seriously. And part of that requires them being like the smart person and trying to take smart people ideas and make them appeal to, you know, normal Americans. And so this whole campaign is like sustained on ideas that really don't matter to people who are not heavily tuned into online right wing politics. And so two years ago, it was cool to like be pro DeSantis. uh, And that in itself was because the media was doing a lot of positive PR for him, particularly formerly uh, never Trump outlets. I think our friend rep coined the neo never Trumper term. These types of outlets were like DeSantis takes on big tech, DeSantis takes on Disney. But then you get closer to the actual election cycle and these companies have a decision to make in terms of their business. A lot of companies ascended because they were being more pro-Trump or at least backed off being anti-Trump in 2016, that sort of momentum. And so I think there's like sort of a a gamble that's been made where it's like, okay, we're going to shield DeSantis, shield DeSantis. But now as the poll numbers aren't working out because as people are exposed to DeSantis more, they're actually more off put by him. I think that media coverage that was sustaining him is largely backing off and you're still seeing like, you know, the influencer coalition that surrounds him kind of double and triple down, but that's not going to be enough to get him over the line. So it's probably one of the worst campaigns in the history of the country. He's not a good candidate. He makes me uncomfortable. And what's worse (laughs) is that coalition of influencers. They're all gay and they're all women. And like, they love that one picture of Trump where Trump has the like, you know, flag that says LGBT for Trump. He hangs out with Caitlin, Bruce Jenner. Like who cares? Trump will hold up anything that has his name on it. You could have like serial (laughs) killers for Trump and he'd be like, wow, look at this. I mean, I don't know if I saw, he would hold it up because that's just, you know, who he is. Mm -hmm. You have to explain to me why like Dave Rubin and all these other gay people are, you know, actually supporting Trump. You've got like gays for Trump. Sure. But in terms of like the actual homosexual influencer class, like they're all going for DeSantis. The neocons are all for DeSantis. Like you have to explain why that is. You have a couple gay guys here and there who like don't like illegal immigrants and they want to vote for Trump. That's fine. But in terms of like actual gay right wing infrastructure, which shouldn't even exist, like why are they all in for DeSantis? Why did DeSantis himself send onesies to Dave Rubin's like kidnapped children? These are all questions I would like to have answers, uh, answers to, but we just won't. So yeah, no, they're all dorks, and I'm really looking forward to them losing so that I can epically dunk on them on all my alts and make them, like, hurt themselves, uh, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> Just all your alts. Real, so now yes. we Now we know who the, uh, what's the John Doyle fan page just has every single John Doyle clip is actually just him. No, that I disavow right. that. Um, I run a couple of my <laughs> biggest critique accounts on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> No, like, that's not ironically real. That's like controlled opposition. Um, and then I've got a couple <laughs> alts that I had started prior to being reinstated by Elon. Um, one of them actually, I think now is over over 40,000, a pretty big Twitter account. Um, Anna Kasparian. People, many, no, no, no. Many people enjoy, but so no one's ever found it. Uh, our good friend Patrick Casey got close one time, but no one's ever solved the mystery. So You are GOP Josh, it turns out. Um, True. The question I'm i want usher. to ask gop josh is like justin beaver and i am his usher i am i am you know, like <laughs> discovering this talent and i'm going to propel him to absolute stardom i got a message from him shortly after let's call it maryland reunion one 
and he quote I don't remember what exactly what he said, but he quoted something that I said. Like, remember I said like he's some kid or something because I didn't know who he was. He's like, oh, I'm just so kid, and I'm just like, Josh, you're the man or something. And then I just noticed he like, he doesn't follow me back. And I'm just like, damn, this kid's really got me. He said, really you gotta got earn, you gotta earn the follow back. You know, it's yeah. not free. He, uh... Do you think his time is free? Do you think his follows are free? Absolutely not. He unironically yeah. corrected me. Like he issued <laughs> correction to me after that. Uh, and then he spoke to me almost like a mob boss because I was like, hey, man, you know, sorry, I didn't mean any disrespect. I was just, you know, talking, you know, whatever, because I think I called him a kid. And then he texted me. It's so cryptic. He goes, you're a good man, John. I was like, <laughs> thank you. Likewise. So we love GOP, Josh. Oh, what I was going to say about Trump is when you said that, you know, he'd he'd be happy with serial killers for Trump or whatever it might be. I watched a 30 minute podcast of him the other day on the UFC channel. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that uh, UFC unfiltered. They talked zero amount about politics and only about fighting, about boxing and MMA. And they just kept bringing up people that he liked him. And he'd be like, you know, you know, Colby Covington and so-and-so don't get along, but they both like me. So I have to support them both. And yes. true. And no matter who the fighter is, whether it's Colby Covington or Jorge Masvidal, who hate each other, he's still going to come out for whichever one is has most recently supported him, which is usually both of them. And he supports them all. Something no, but else but that, want, that interview yeah. was actually very uh, telling to me because Rob DeSanctis could never sit down for 40 minutes and just talk about something outside of politics. He just couldn't, right? Whereas Trump, it wasn't forced at all. I mean, he, he actually just no. knew the sport and it was actually a really good conversation. So, And yeah, I think I that goes a long way. way. Yeah, And that's the thing. Like all of the big political figures, like people that define eras, you can read their writings, their journals, whatever. They all have like, borderline autistic interests and many other things. I, I'm not saying that's Trump, but they are normal people, real people mm -hmm. that have interests and they have a high level of knowledge that then can, you know, translate into those interests. So they have like a very sophisticated understanding. Trump has that. Uh, maybe his interests are, you know, maybe more of the common man. Maybe he hasn't read like all of the big brain political literature, but somebody who is like bred to be a politician followed all the lily pads to become a politician, whether it's, you know, oh, I sat, I sat over in JAG and then I took the picture of myself <laughs> in the uniform and I served, damn it, I wore the uniform. And then I went to the, you know, the law school and the Ivy League, things like that. Like these people are just not interesting. Like be a good politician, be a good governor, but you, you can't unseat Trump. I mean, literally like the defining political figure of like the last 40 years. Yeah, honestly, real. And uh, you're not going to be able to unseat that guy. Um, without, you know, being better and you're just not. So it's embarrassing. It's like a real Macbeth type story here <laughs> that all the people whispering into his ear, especially his wife, and then he does it. And I, I'm not even saying this to be mean. Like, I genuinely feel this. In some of the videos I see of DeSantis, he looks like he's about to cry. Yeah. Uh, like, he legitimately looks like he's just like, can we just please get it over with? Because he know. I mean, he's smart enough to know that it's over. But uh, he's got way too much money, way too much, you know, vested interest puppeteering his continuation of this. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty brutal. I don't know where he goes after this, honestly. Like, I'm, I'm sure maybe he can win re-election, but in terms of like national prospects, might be over. Yeah, I don't know why. That was the most suspicious thing about him running for me was, are you telling me that you're done? Like, you've done everything you can do in Florida already and you can't wait another four years? to run when trump's either well, he, he you know he's or lost he's a career politician and to him this was always a stepping stone you know and that's just that's just him you know he's just total careers that's so lame yeah. though that makes it sound like you don't actually just care about the state that you claim to care about so much and uh there's well, haven't you ever heard of vince do. dow nationalism what what do you think nationalism and vince dow nationalism means it is a national <laughs> movement it is not confined to the borders of a state so what you're saying is everything vince does is actually a stepping stone we so are, what you're <laughs> saying, we are so you're saying you sound like the jordan peterson is that a canadian thing you're nobody like, knows what it means name? but it's provocative yeah exactly yeah, it gets just think of going. the children just think of the young boys that's a Jordan Peterson thing. We're all the D12 in Vince Dow's M&M world is He's what I'm getting from that. on Twitter recently. Someone needs to check in on Jordan He's... Peterson's posting. 
he spends a lot of time on there. Uh, before we we went on, while we were waiting for John to grace us with his presence, Vince, we were talking about how long it's been since we spoke, and I wanted mm-hmm. to ask you about your the gigantic reach you had from the um, was it the vice thing yeah, right yeah. with Asian Americans? Yeah. What uh, what doors have been opened? What people reaching out to you? I saw some Michael Knowles interaction that was cool. I like Michael. Yeah, Knowles. we did an interview about it. Yeah, it was cool. right. Yeah. What is other than that, has there been people reaching out? What has Vince Dow nationalism done since then? Well, I mean, I think we just kind of have skyrocketed since then, right? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, the numbers have been good and all that. I mean, yeah, I, I knew going in too. I was like, you know, if you play this right, this really could be a big launching moment for you professionally. And then when I was in there, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, we got it. But uh, to be, tell you the truth, I wasn't expecting it to go as big as it did because initially it went big and people talked about it, it was whatever. But then you had like that second wave, like two months afterward, where it just absolutely blew up. So, you know, I'm blessed, obviously. And I mean, I I wouldn't say any like I wouldn't say Donald Trump called me by any means. But I mean, I've definitely built more, I guess, infrastructure or, you know, traction in the movement since then, I suppose you could say. Definitely. Was were these people in this very photo was like, was it easy to predict what arguments you'd be facing going into that? I know they they film like a little sit down with each person. Mm -hmm. These people, purple hair, uh, perpetually shocked guy. Was it easy sort of to predict their arguments and what you're going to be up against? Yeah, I mean, so I I could already tell, you know, I I didn't even really talk to any of them in the green room, but I saw the color of the hair and I heard just the way (laughs) she was speaking, you know, the the juvenile way in which she was speaking and, uh, you know, the effeminate mannerisms of the two on the left. And I, I, yeah, I, I basically knew, I basically knew. I did one piece of research before the panel because I just knew it was about Asian issues. I just looked up the hate crime statistic kind of fact check. And, and that was about it. Cause I, I basically knew where it was going to go and, and it, it went exactly there. I don't recall, but did the, you know, the whole Harvard and, and uh, affirmative action stuff come up? Mm-hmm. Uh, it briefly did, but at the time, I guess the discourse was more so about the, you know, the, the getting pushed in the subway stuff. So mm. it briefly, we talked about it a little bit, but it wasn't really central at the time, which was interesting. Yeah. What's also interesting to me is the grouping in of the uh, Pacific Islanders with all of yeah. this. I mean, I'm, I'm not well, sure. Well, I mean, just look at the pa- <laughs> half the panel is not even Asian. You know, it's like you get Samoan guys and stuff. Yeah, like my that. favorite comment on the, the post was, uh, where are the Asian Americans? Because <laughs> it's <laughs> so. And how much does professional wrestling matter to you guys? <laughs> Samoans, everybody, they wrestle a lot. In the same vein, mm-hmm. uh, Jonathan, the um, the dating show, what what's it called? The Whatever Podcast. Did that yeah. expose you to a new, you know, I'd imagine whatever podcast and fresh and fit have a slightly, you know, less political fan base. And then what do they call them? The red pill community for lack of a better term. Did that open you up to a different audience where you started seeing, um, you know, interactions and invites from other people in that sort of realm? In a certain sense, but you know, that type of content, I sort of abhor. Uh, I mean, I have respect for it insofar as like it is content and, you know, the guy who runs it is competent. He's a smart guy. Uh, But I kind of hate the whole genre. I think it poisons the well. I think it's like you mentioned Revenge of the Nerds. It's like pornography. I mean, you know, guys can watch that and be like, yeah, Andrew Tate, you know, tell her, tell her that she's a stupid bitch. You know, it's like, <laughs> like it's like, and then, you know, on the other hand, it's like, you know, some like a woman's going to be like, yeah, only fans whore, tell them off and then we can be strong and independent. It's all just like bigger, like. People and you know I like Andrew Tate for what it's worth. I mean, on some things like the Muslim thing, I think you know. <laughs> but as a, a figure, I think on the net very positive. Uh, and honestly, I think a lot of the pushback he gets is because his existence opens up doors to have conversations about the nature of women and the nature yeah. of men that people just don't want to have. Yeah. Uh, especially with some of the criminal charges he's been going through, frankly. But anyways. So I went on. But the thing with that kind of content is people are saying things. And sometimes, like, I felt sincerely on that panel or just with the whole genre in itself, like, I don't understand what they are trying to say. It's it's as if they're just trying to prove that they can speak English. Like, they'll be on there and I'm watching this content. And they're just like, if a man is high status, he can leverage being high status to get himself a woman who's hotter and has a lower body count. 
like yeah like like sure like why are you saying that like it's some like profound like obviously that's true like why is this like what we're doing who doesn't know that it's like they're saying that just to say it and it's like you've got these guys who are you know relatively famous relatively influential have some a bit of money and they're just like relax little bro i'll tell off the thought and you've got like chud jack thank you you know (laughs) tell her off and like that's like who the content is for so i wasn't really going into that situation like thinking i was gonna you know get a lot of new fans i picked up uh some people but the the vice panel definitely in terms of like where you want to insert yourself was uh the better calculated move there uh very good opportunity because those are people who are at least intelligent enough to you know acknowledge the existence of political discussion people who are trying to do that in a more like relationship type of way i mean like you're not going to reinvent the wheel uh certainly there are more modern dynamics to be explored but yeah i tend to just think that content is like poison i mean you're you're representing like both extremes of just like either only fans mm-hmm. thought or like red pilled alpha male um and in most cases i mean that should have been dead that stuff died out like at least close to a decade ago and now all these people are just riding off andrew tate's coattails because he blew up about a year ago and so now you've got this sort of like second wave red pill alpha male stuff and you know for what it's worth a lot of that stuff is good information for guys to have because maybe they didn't grow up with brothers maybe their dad didn't teach it to them but um at a certain point it's just like i don't know like do you think napoleon ever went to a seminar of like how to be a you know a better man how to lead a cold shower it's like at a certain point this is just innate it's just genetic some people are just predestined to be mediocre like most people actually and so i think it is good to maybe help people reach their ceiling but at a certain point it's disingenuous telling people like if you buy my course you're going to stop being like a wagey. Like some people are destined to be de- like gas station clerks. Like it's just like what it is. So I don't know. Yeah. I have a friend who loves doing his monotonous nine to five job. It's, it's very strange and shout out walking Phoenix for the Napoleon reference. Um, there's even a she version now, Pearl Davis. Do you guys have any thoughts on her? Um, she's uh. really to me. <laughs> you don't want to talk. What is that? I, I don't know. I haven't seen a lot. From what I've seen, it makes me want to kill myself. But it's just, it's, I don't know. It's like, it's the same thing, you know? It's just like, she's talking about like, women are hotter when they're young. Boom, roasted. And it's like, like yes, yeah, sure. But I don't know. And she's like mid. Honestly, that's what's offensive to me about it. It's like, you know, you have to be like hot. That's like the deal. <laughs> you're going to talk about being like an alpha male red pill guy. You have to have a bit of money. You have to be good looking. If you're going to talk about how to leverage your value as a woman. You have to be hot. That's the rule. Why are you with the tape? Like who secured it? Like who let her in? I don't get it. So I don't know. She's going to see this and she's going to be like, John Doyle's right. I am an attract. <laughs> um, what about holy? I forgot. I forgot about this. I can't believe about it. The black history month video. My oh, God, yes. the living room was a rocking uh, during that video at, in this Canadian household, let me tell you, um, fallout, um, what took so long? Were you, did anything, you know, happen afterwards? What's the, what's something we don't know about the video, which was you going to an HBCU during black history month and just, you know, sans, which means I guess nobody's Canadian here, but me without the binder full of stuff, which you explained in the video, take us through that was there any point where there was you know regret during it you thought maybe things are going to get out of hand i think you left when you thought things were going to get out of hand with the police give us a little bit of insight on that there's no such thing as safety or danger there's no such thing as ethical or unethical there is only okay obi-wan there is only content (laughs) so i walked into it people are like oh my gosh you were so brave I, I, I was unable to experience fear because my priority <laughs> is not safety. It is content. It was like a it's very real, sort John. of like, no, seriously, it was like a very sort of tranquil state because I'm like looking death in the eye and I'm like, if you do this, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting content. I'm like, I don't care. Um, so I don't know. The point of that video wasn't to, and so like a lot of people are trying to, you know, outflank me from the right and be like Doyle thinks he's going to have a Socratic dialogue with, you know, people who are racist against white people. That wasn't the point. The point was to show, and I explained this in the video, the point was to showcase how largely impossible that kind of dialogue is 
uh, between, you know, like young black students and, you know, normal young white people or whatever. Uh, a lot of well-meaning conservatives tend to think that like, there's just like, oh, they're just like, you know, being misled by the Democrat plantation, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's true, but you don't understand how bad it is. So I was trying to shine a light on that. Uh, cause a lot of people think that like the reason the Dem or the blacks are voting Democrat, you know, 95% is because like conservatives just haven't appealed on issues like criminal justice and things like that. You know, Trump <laughs> unfortunately fell victim to a lot of that bad messaging, uh, during his first administration. So that was the point of the video. It was to shine a light, uh, and say like, this is the reality of how this is. Um, and so maybe we need to accept that. And, you know, there were a lot of good stuff there was a lot of good stuff in there in terms of the facts, because if you're going to have that conversation, it's typically going to go about one of seven ways in terms of generational wealth, slavery, Jim Crow and redlining. You know, we hit on pretty much all of those. Um, and there was a lot of good information there. But yeah, I guess the only fallout that happened that I didn't mention was I was reached out to by a lot of very uh, well-known conservatives who were like, dude, this is so awesome. You've got some balls, man. And I don't expect this, but I think it's interesting that they were willing to, you know, extend that sort of endorsement privately, but then publicly they wouldn't do the same, which I don't expect. Again, you know, it's like, that's kind of a controversial video. I don't expect you to put your reputation on the line, but I think it does go to show like, like we said in the video, there are very safe ways to do that where it's like, I'm going to go, you know, debate like white kids on socialism, ha ha ha, or I'm going to go debate white kids on systemic racism. It's like, who cares what white people think about systemic racism? Oh, well, that's identity politics. Yeah, it is. Like, why wouldn't you talk to black people about systemic racism? Like, that's the block that is pushing that. White people may buy into it, but if not for black people, white people would move on to something else. Like, that's, you know, who you want to talk to. So it's very interesting to me that, you know, not only when they do have that conversation, they want to go on the campus and talk to the white kids about racism, or whatever. It's like, okay, I'm going to go to an HBCU, talk to black kids about systemic racism. And we find out a lot about how they actually view America, its institutions, white people, et cetera, et cetera. And then people didn't really want to draw attention to that because it makes uh, the sort of messaging that, you know, that coalition, um, the messaging that that coalition tends to espouse sort of like inconvenient, I would say. So I didn't appreciate that, but I understand it, I guess. Hmm. I think my advice, my hindsight advice to you is you should have worn the Michael Vick Atlanta Falcons jersey. Uh, <laughs> really worked that, really worked the dog fighting angle. Um, what I did notice, though, on a more serious note, is that a lot of the, the, a lot of the justifications for many of the viewpoints expressed on that episode were, you know, a hundred years ago, this happened or 60 years ago, this happened. Civil rights movement, Jim Crow laws. Why do you think there's such an inkling to go back to a his historical wrongs or historical injustices amongst this group where clearly they're taught a lot about this? You had a lot of these students come up in different instances separate from each other and say, well, what about Black Wall Street or what about this thing that happened, which most people probably don't know anything about and clearly uh, this school is specifically teaching these talking points. Why do you think so many of the arguments you faced were historically based? Like, where if I was to come up to somebody and be like, in 1637, my French ancestors came to Canada and they were treated poorly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, quite honestly, because they have to. There's no other answer. There has to be, uh, but what about this? But what about this? Because if not for that, everyone would be wondering, like, wait a minute, why is your material standard of living? Why is your culture? Why are all these things not catching up? Uh, it's like the same thing where, you know, we have to be taught from infancy in public education that, that we, you know, enslaved blacks. Where there was Jim Crow and all the civil rights movement and MLK is such a hero. Literally at like almost 24 hours a day, your existence in this country is reminding you at all times that white people have been really mean to black people forever. And the reason that's done is because if that weren't done, people would start to ask themselves, wait a minute, why are they behaving this way? Why are they existing this way in their communities? Why haven't they like caught up to speed, so to speak, uh, since the advent of civil rights? And well, it's because we oppress them because of all this other stuff. And it's like, it's really not true. You know, when you really get into it, uh, it seems, and this is not my belief, this is the observation from reading the data, it seems that for whatever reason, black people in America have failed to cultivate a culture that produces 
an outcome that would be, you know, reasonable to expect in a country like the United States uh, is what I'll say. And so, yeah, they have to, because, you know, if not for all of these historical injustices or these other you know, examples of systemic racism, at a certain point, it would be on them to be like, wait a minute, why are we just not producing these results uh, as a culture, as a community? Um, so they have to, yeah, outsource that blame, because if not the fault of other people, then they would just have to look introspectively, which they don't seem to want to do. And demonetized. Vince, there is an <laughs> H there is an HBCU in Florida A and M. It was just in the news because mm -hmm. they uh do you see this? Some rapper shot a basically what I'll call a murder rap music video in the football dressing room there without um without permission from the school at all. So the entire yeah. football program is on uh, suspension right now from top to bottom, which is is pretty interesting. Any could you do anything like this for I don't know. I guess there's no Asian BCUs, but uh, go to the go to the Florida one. Why not? Rip John style. I mean, I guess we could give it a try sometime. I, I've I've never thought of it explicitly to go and do that, but I mean, just, I don't know. Maybe it's in the cards in the future, right? The because. I mean, I think it's a good metaphor for just the world in general, right? The the Asian guy has to knock off and copy what the white guy does, and and you know, uh, so I, maybe, maybe, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll give it some thought. I'll say we'll 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 consider it. That's a deep remark there. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's the thing too. Like, white people will acknowledge lower class behavior. We condemn it. We call it white trash. We look down and ostracize white people who behave in ways that we associate with lower classes. Other groups in this country don't do that. Uh, and in fact, if you point out that lower class behavior as a member of the out group, you're condemned and you're even blamed for it. And so, you know, it is sort of like a boomer talking point. But when you really dig through the weeds, it's absolutely true. And that was the point of the video was to say, like, yeah, black Americans are completely and wholly responsible for the way they exist in this country. Uh, it's not the fault of the history of the country, the institutions, not the fault of anybody except black Americans. And baby boomers will say that. But then recently, they've even started to buy into some of the like, oh, of course, you know, we used to be racist, but now we're not. No, I don't buy it. Uh, and I know it's not true, actually, because I've read the relevant literature. I've done the homework. So that was the point of the video is to say that, like, no, this isn't true. Uh, and we have to have a more honest discussion about it, because as the country continues to change, as we as conservatives, we as people continue to lose power and representation, it's not going to get better. It's just going to continue to get worse. And so it, we're going to eventually have to have the discussion, honestly. So I'm trying to make that happen sooner rather than later, essentially. Mm. My African friends were very quick to say that um, American, well, in this case, Canadian uh, black guys bothered them uh, to a degree. One was an Eritrean guy and one was Somali, uh, Somali guy, very rich, hence why he was in Canada. But yeah, they were just like constantly <laughs> complaining about black guys, which is funny in a sense. But I identify you guys, I really identify with the way you were saying with the lower class. I get harped on for being Canadian from John. Um, very racially charged things he says to me. Um, and then yes. I get the French angle from my friends. Um, so I get it in all directions. But uh, So I would just like to particularly victimize myself. Um, you know. Yeah, and I mean... Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if I, we're supposed to say it like this, but it's, there is something very dysfunctional about what you would call overarching mainstream black culture in America. And frankly, when you correlate that to the statistics on literally anything, fatherlessness, incarceration rates, poverty rates, everything, right? It, it, it shows this. But of course, as John brings up, if you point that out, well, you know. <laughs> Have you guys ever that, seen right? that? that Ann Coulter clip when she's on a Catholic priest TV show and she brings up fatherlessness in the home and how uh, single mother homes basically end up providing the country with all, you know, murderers, drug addicts, people go to jail, sort of like that. And the entire audience is just women standing up saying, actually, my mother was a single mother. And my aunt's a single mother and she did amazing. And it's the, the want to defend the other is very strong, particularly with 
white women and you also get it with Indian women here in Canada where there is this weird desire to take on the plight of somebody else. Where do you guys think that comes from? The, I think the feminine mindset inherently, you know, it's <laughs> yeah, probably where it comes from. Yeah. Highly susceptible to emotional propaganda. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's probably what, and uh, eh, no, I'm not going to say that. Um, <laughs> and <perfect. yeah. laughs> no, no, that's not what I was going to say. She likes black guys. I've heard, but um, well, I guess maybe that's the same thing, but maybe a little bit different motivation there. Uh, but yeah. Uh, a lot of, uh, yes. What's, um, what's going on next for everybody. What's on the plan. Uh, what's the plan. I, all I hear whenever I do a video with John is, Oh, so he'll do videos on other people's channels, but not his own. <laughs> Yeah, look, I'm a nice guy. I'm a generous guy. I'm helping out our brother. From I'm not the complaining. North. Uh, well, yeah, you better not, or else this will be the final appearance on the uh, globally syndicated Andrew Says program. <laughs> it technically is, actually. That's why I, I said that. Yeah. Through all my channels. So uh, true. <laughs> where should I move? Florida or Texas? John, Florida. you basically moved from Florida because you basically moved from what I would say geographically, not border wise, but geographically similar to where uh, I've experienced. And you're saying Florida instead of Texas? Yeah, because the way that you tried to compare us just now is part of the reason why I would like <laughs> you to move to Florida. I don't want you to be anywhere near me. I want you to be I'm, I want you to stay far away. That's just not nice and not true. <laughs> well, because if you move to Texas, there's going to be this sort of like implicit obligation to hang out with you. And I don't want to do that. That's what you think, eh? So you should move to Florida. Andrew, I will hang out with you. Come Thank you, over. Vince. Thank Real. you. John yeah, has it's this. It's like a pity thing. He's had this, you know, <laughs> the whatever, whatever the John Doyle fan club calls themselves, the John Doyle Republic or something. He's had his ego stroked into oblivion here. Whereas if I was to move into the vicinity of him, I would just be calling him and texting him every day which i do already so there would be no change there and no that, like, that has nothing to do with, with my me. no it's nothing to do with my ego it's i don't like you because you look different from me you are canadian i consider I you look different you know what i want to hang out with you one time i want to examine aren't your you cranium. irish i want to i want to hey easy i'm french you're talking to uh jean van core here all right I want to take. I want to measure your cranium with like ancient uh, phrenology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is it? Phrenology or whatever. Yeah. I want to use uh, the like phrenological tools of the 17th or 19th century, or whatever, to examine your cranium. You Canadian ape. You so. I want to know what. Well, you ever seen South Park? I mean, to. I think their their upper and bottom. Yeah, yeah. Are Literally separated. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Oh, guy. We want more money. <laughs> yeah, that's that's you. No, you you should move to Texas. Um, I enjoy it, and we need the uh, we need the votes down here since we're going to go blue imminently. Um, I tend to think, and I don't know, maybe Vince can speak more to this. I feel like my experience in Texas versus Florida, Texas seems like a place that people actually like live and exist. Florida seems much more of like a mixture of like tourism and retirement communities, and I don't know. At the time I've spent there, it doesn't feel like a place that I could live. If that makes sense. It feels like a place you go to have fun. I've been to Florida. It's very hot. I don't like the way yeah. the lizards' tails grow back. Um, <laughs> that's weird. And the lack of basements. There are basements in Texas, right? I, you you no. can find them, but uh, typically no. Well, I mean, I grew up in Southern California. So to me, South Florida and Southern California are basically the same place. Change politics, demographics, and like tropicalness a little bit and it's basically the same uh but there are many parts of florida if you go north right you're basically in like the deep south more or less so there there's that case i don't know i i just don't like texas i don't know what it is it's, it, it just it feels so just spread out and kind of very flat i, I don't know i just I, I i don't vibe with that place John's coming to fight you, I think. Yeah. Is there not is it not a normal thing to have basements in the US or is this just something that I've never had a basement in, in my life. You've never had a nope. basement. Uh uh. So there's no basements in California either. What'd you, you know, say, no partner? <laughs> Where like do you guys Texas? hang out when you're teenagers if not a basement? Is it's strange to me. You can't find me. I'm in the trees. Wait, where's mine? Is that a Vietnamese joke? Yes. Yeah. It's like the cover of Red Dead Revolver or uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to play uh, Cowboys. You can't find and, me. Cowboys play, and uh, uh, 
can say what's, that. What's the um, now you've made me have to edit something? I don't know if I have to edit that out or not. Now you have to work. I give yeah, exactly. Job. What this is, is beautiful? YouTube. This is my Colt Python. You may oh, recognize it from uh, Black Ops, which is literally that's why what I was going to say. Black. What's the one in Vietnam? Which Call of Duty? Black Ops, right? Yeah. Numbers yeah, Mason. No, yes. Yes. I think. Yeah. There's a Python in that game. I was just thinking because of the hat, you know. I like how you can't even wear the headphones with that. <laughs> We're all wearing our traditional cultural garb now, I think. Yeah, I messed this is true. that up, though. Yeah. Do you guys know what the tra who the Trailer Park Boys are? I'm yeah, familiar. And yeah. then I got the, the Tim Hortons fanny pack. I'm going to have to change the Star Wars thing now. That's one thing I do miss. Dude. I love Tim's. From Michigan? Yeah, we got some locations there. Oh, wow. So I am right then. I can hear myself from your headphones now, Vince, by the way. Yeah, okay, so let's just drop this. <laughs> um, so you are basically Canadian. So when I say that about you, it's true. If you have Tim Horton. You seen that about me there, guy. Okay. A boat? A oh, boot. hey there. Yeah. So You better be it, careful. It, I'll pull up to school with some Timbits and take your girl there, bud. I'll take your bird. I'll snatch her right from you. We don't say bird. Oh, you talk, isn't that a thing? No. Well, I saw the Nelk boys used to call girls birds, and I assumed that uh, that was a thing. <sighs> Nelk boys, I have a story about them, but I'm saving it. I'm really saving it for the for the right time. Uh, I worked with them once. Good guys, very good, good guys, very good guys. But without basements, this is very troubling to me that I won't be able to have a basement. This is. I don't know how you can live. Where do you put all your extra stuff? Um, the garage. Trying to take a chud jack out of the basement. He's like, wait, but what do I do? Where do I dwell? You, you put it in the garage. I don't know. The chud jack? That's yeah, you. I don't speak uh, Michiganese. I'm sorry. You think that's a Michigan thing? Probably oh, a Reddit so thing with the word chud. I've been to of... Michigan a few times. I've been to Detroit. That was wonderful. Um, Real? Then I went to... Where is that hotly contested area where Trump does rallies? I covered that Grand one. Grand Rapids? No, very north. Very uh, north? Yeah. I don't think he does rallies very north. It was basically on the water. I don't... Um... Well, I mean, we're surrounded by water. I think it, you're probably talking about Grand Rapids. I'm not talking about Grand Rapids. I know where that is. There's a minor hockey league team there. Uh, maybe Lansing, Battle Creek. No. No, it wasn't Traverse City. Yes, it was Traverse City. Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, uh, very cold well, there, but yeah, I've been there. That was that was a that was a nice place in terms of like small town feel. Uh, and very cold on the water there, so that's what I'm used to. I've never been to Texas. I've been to Florida as a kid. Did the old Disney World trip, NASA, and everything. Humidity, and you're right. We did stay at the time. My mother was with some guy, and we stayed in some uh, his parents' retirement facility, which was trailers and crap like that outside of Orlando. So that's my life, you guys. Sounds Thanks fun. for sharing. Thanks yeah. for sharing. Really got to carry this for you guys. Sorry about that. Um, We're supposed to provide commentary on your life, your background. <laughs> yeah, no, you're hey, supposed to jump in at Vince, any time. You know. Vince, what? Yes, yeah, give okay, a take on uh, Andrew's mom Thank being you. with some guy. What are the cultural implications of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was Dutch, so probably not good. Crickets, you guys. <clears throat> All right. Well, if uh, we're getting dead air here, I think it's time to wrap it up. Okay. Are you going to do an outro? <sighs> we don't have to do outros on, on this, you guys. John, where does this? Uh, where do we get a hat like this? Oh, shoot. I don't remember, but it was uh, at the mall when I came down to Dallas for the first time. There were some like Texan. Uh, they, they sold like, you know, leather goods and they sold hats. This is a Stetson, which I ruined because I accidentally sat on it. So now it's deformed, uh, which mm. actually <laughs> looks so retarded. Uh, but anyways, yeah, you get a hat like that pretty much anywhere in Texas. I would definitely get a Stetson. That's what when you get down here, we'll get you a Stetson. We'll get you a pair of uh, Lucchese boots. You'll be You'll be ready. You'll you'll hit the stockyards. We'll go to a dance hall. We'll get you a nice uh, southern gal, and then you can take her to Florida. Uh, that's mean. Um, I already have flight vouchers. Had last year, what happened was bought, booked the flight, and 
rental car, hotel, all this stuff, desperately text John to hang out um, in a basement somewhere. And then COVID uh, vaccine requirements don't get lifted. So just had to just had to either eat it or take these flight vouchers that ends before uh, 2024, I guess. So didn't I'm you have to out with rep? No. OK, because I remember Rep told me a story. He was he was very vague about it, but he was like, yeah, John, there was some guy that wanted to hang out with you, but you flaked. And so I ended up hanging out with him and he tried to kiss me on the mouth. And I was like, that's really weird. Please let me know who that is. So I don't ever get into that situation. And he wouldn't. He was very cryptic and like mysterious about it. So kind of peace. What I'm learning first time. What I'm learning is that Rep is hanging out with guys who try to kiss him and it's not me. So. A lot of the stuff is coming together. He's gonna he's gonna be glad that he wasn't here. That a good twenty five percent of yeah, the oh, he, know, about- he knows. He knows. <laughs> Ironically, he's probably not here because he's doing exactly that. You know, at any given time, if you cut to rep, like in GTA five, <laughs> you switch to a character. If you cut to rep, it is more Zoom likely out. it's more likely that he is kissing a guy than it is that he's not kissing a guy. Anytime you cut to rep, it's like a fifty percent chance plus one. If you flip a coin, there's a greater chance that rep is kissing a guy than that'll come up on heads. It's like uh, Trevor, I guess, in GTA five, you cut to him and he's like naked in the desert somewhere. I don't know rep well enough to rip on him this hard. So I'm glad you guys are filling in that gap. You don't confuse this with like, you know, fraternal banter. It's not, I know him well enough. So I feel like I can bust his balls a little. It's, I know him well enough to know that this is all like real information. It's kind of like, you know, oh, I've read a lot on World War II, so I can speak about Operation, you know, Barbarossa or whatever. It's like I know Rep very well, so I can speak about these anecdotes that we have of him. You were there. You have the flashbacks. It's all coming back to you. Yeah, real. Real talk. All right. I appreciate you all coming on. Uh, Vince, anything else you want to say that's damaging to anybody who's not here? Uh, well, unlike John, I'm actually a very nice guy. It's like, you know, good cop, bad cop. So it's true. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, you know, Rep. He's a he's a he's an okay guy. He's an all right guy. All right. <laughs> that's some a, accounts. That's an amazing uh, validation of him. John, anything else to say? Yeah, no, he's he's right. We, we love rep. Uh, I will say for the record that most of what I said about him is not true. Hmm. And uh, we wish he could have been here. Very smart guy. And he could have contributed splendidly to the 10% of this discussion that was on substantive, uh, real (laughs) issues. So maybe next time. That's what the Maryland reunion is all about, you know, uh, substantive topics that are culturally relevant and not at all about my life and the time and sorrow that it is being Canadian and trapped here for what seems like an eternity. Yeah, it was kind of, it was like the Blair Witch Project. It was like, I go into this abandoned house and this abandoned Airbnb and I see Vince Dow in a corner just like this. And I'm like, what? And then Rep was there doing some weird ritual and they found the footage years later. (laughs) You just walked in one direction and ended up in the same place. Yeah. (laughs) Oh God. All right. All right.